Hi, so I should be live. Um, hola y bienvenidos a clase 3 de mis clases en vivo, eh, que es el nivel A2. Y eh, un requisito de este nivel es que han terminado el primer nivel, que fue el A1 de mi curso de inglés para principiantes. Vamos a empezar la clase de hoy. Vamos a empezar con algo. Vamos a seguir en esta clase con repasos. Creo que los primeros mmm, cinco o seis clases de este nivel van a estar repasos de que vimos en el primer nivel. Uh, entonces vamos a empezar con algunos ejercicios. Hola a todos en el chat. Uh, vamos a empezar con algunos ejercicios. Um, algunas preguntas. Uh, vamos a practicar algunos números, horas y fechas. Uh, la primera pregunta es... Um, ¿Cuál es el número de Sigi? 9, 10... Si alguien puede escribir en el chat. Ahorita YouTube tiene una nueva opción que cuando estás haciendo los videos en vivo que es um, ultra low latency. Entonces ya yeah, 11. Con eso estoy esperando que que el chat va a estar más rápido y por así que sí es. La desventaja de este nuevo sistema es que no puedes Retras, uh, ir detrás en el video mientras está, que está en vivo y que sigue el 11 so it's 9, 10, 11 12 very good yeah, el, parece que el chat está mucho más rápido ok mismo tipo de pregunta if we put next que sigue que sigue 15, 16, que sigue 15, 16, 17, very good Santiago, 17, 17, and what's next, what's after 17, 17, 17, what's after 17, 15, 16, 17, what's after 17, Fernando, gracias Fernando. 18, very good. 18. Uh, antes que seguimos, vamos a... Uh, ya, yeah, vamos a hacer los próximos y, y podemos ver la pronunciación de eso. Um, ya. Yeah. ¿Qué sigue? En la secuencia, ¿qué sigue? Nineteen, ya, yeah, ya hemos terminado eso, Raúl. Seventy, seventy. Very good. And eighty, good. Let's, vamos a ver porque muchas personas tienen un problema escuchando y pronunciando eh, la diferencia entre fifteen and fifty. Sixteen and sixty. Seventeen and seventy. 18 and 80. Muchas personas tienen un problema a pronunciarlo y entenderlo. La diferencia entre este, mira, 15, 15 and 50 es el sonido del vocal. Aquí el vocal en el 15, 16, 17, 18 es más largo. Y aquí el vocal es 50. 60, 70, 80. Estoy, estoy exagerándolo un poco, pero lo, la cosa es que siempre digo esto, sí, 15, cuando dices eso, 15, 16, 17, 18, tienes que estar riendo. Si no estás riendo, no estás diciendo lo correcto. Estoy exagerando un poco, pero vamos a hacerlo. Voy a repetir todos y vamos a ver, uh, ustedes pueden 
repetir después a mí. Primero esos aquí. 15, 16, 17, 18. Y ahorita esos. 50, 60, 70, 80. Muy importante porque eso, con eso puedes tener mucha confusión si no lo entiendes bien o no lo dices bien. Puede, puede, puede ser muy confuso la, la situación. Ok, what about the um, ordinal numbers? The ordinal numbers que okay. también vimos en la. Sorry. En, la, en el curso anterior. First, second. First, second. ¿Qué sigue? Third, third. Third. Very good, third. And third, y la próxima. La próxima. La próxima, alguien me puede decir la próxima. Fourth, yeah, fourth, with a U. Uh, puse eso, en la, eh, fije en la clase anterior que puso eso y ese es un error y lo escribió mal. Es, este es la, ¿cómo se escribe? Correcto. First, second, third, fourth. Es como en el español. Primero, segundo, tercero, cuarto. Y lo que sigue es el fifth. And then sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. It's es un poco difícil de pronunciar porque este es el fourth, el sonido fourth. Solo es el la lengua está aquí en los dientes y solo es el airy. No estás usando los cordones vocales. Fourth, fourth. Very good. Um, what's next? Mm, what about the days of the week? Who can remember the days of the week? Days of the week. Monday. What's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? What's after Monday? What's after Monday? Tuesday. Very good. Yeah. And then we follow with Thursday. No, Thursday, no. Thursday is jueves. Tuesday, Thursday. Voy a hablar de la pronunciación de eso. Wednesday. 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 What's after Wednesday? Should be holidays. They are proper nouns. Should be with a capital. Mayúsculo. Todos los días con mayúsculos. Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday. What's next? What's after Thursday? What? Today is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. And we, we just as well do the last two. What's after Friday? The weekend. These are the days of the week. Friday. Saturday. And Sunday. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, yo soy, como deberían saber, soy de Inglaterra. Um, la pronunciación de Tuesday, martes, para mí es como Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Este es la pronunciación en United Kingdom o Reino Unido. Pero en Estados Unidos, no dicen Tuesday, dicen Tuesday. La pronunciación es más como este. Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday en Inglaterra, Tuesday en Estados Unidos. Y mientras que estamos en ese tema, siempre hay muchas preguntas en, el, en, el, en, el, en los comentarios de mis videos. O sea, este es el inglés americano, es el inglés británico y hay muchas personas que creen que son dos idiomas y no son dos idiomas. Yo 
soy de Inglaterra, nunca he tenido un problema comunicándome con una persona de Estados Unidos. Es el mismo idioma. Las diferencias son principalmente en el acento, pero hay diferentes acentos en Inglaterra y diferentes acentos en Estados Unidos y diferentes acentos, acentos entre individu individuales. Entonces, no deberían preocupar tanto o nada realmente en este nivel que estás aprendiendo el inglés americano o el inglés británico. Es el mismo inglés. La otra diferencia es, um, fíjate que aquí escribe Tuesday Mal, es en algún vocabulario. Hay algunas palabras que, no es que la palabra no existe en Inglaterra o Estados Unidos, pero es más común usar una palabra en Estados Unidos y otra palabra en Inglaterra. Y lo que intento hacer en mi curso es dar las dos opciones. Por ejemplo, um, en Inglaterra para vacaciones decimos holidays. Y en Estados Unidos es más común decir vacations. Uh, pero yo, yo, si alguien me dice vacations, yo sé de qué están hablando. Es exactamente igual del español. En el español, uh, si vas a Perú, uh, vienes a México o vas a España, usan diferentes palabras para diferentes cosas. Pero realmente es, es lo mismo idioma. Ustedes no tienen un problema comunicarse con una persona de España, Perú o México. Es el mismo idioma. Uh, entonces... Lo que estamos aprendiendo no es el inglés americano ni el inglés um, británico, pero el inglés internacional. Y ese es el otro asunto porque ahorita el inglés es un idioma internacional y vas a hablar el inglés con personas, no solo con personas que hablan inglés como nativos, pero si haces negocio en Alemania o Japón o China, Vas a, vas a estar hablando el inglés con esas personas también, si no quieres aprender alemán, chino y japonés. Entonces, es una, lo que intentamos hacer cuando enseñamos inglés como un idioma para extranjeros es enseñar el inglés estándar y internacional. Ok, suficiente de este tema. Alguien pregunta, ¿de dónde soy? Yo soy de una ciudad que se llama Brighton, que es... En el sur de Inglaterra. Es uh, una hora de Londres. Pero ahorita no vivo ahí. Ok, vamos a seguir. Es mucho de eso. Pero veo que hay muchas preguntas en el chat. O en los comentarios. Este es el inglés americano. Y por eso quería tratar. Y creo que voy a hacer un video solo de ese tema. Vamos a seguir con esas preguntas. Hicimos los días de la semana, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What about this one? Uh, number six. Let me get rid of that there, first of all. Number six. Number six. Um, Morning. Right now it's not morning because here it's 12.45. So what comes after morning? What comes after morning? Can somebody tell me what comes after morning? What comes after morning? Afternoon. Very good. Yeah, afternoon. Afternoon. What's after afternoon? What's after afternoon? Morning, afternoon. What's the next one? What's the next one? The next word after afternoon. Evening. Very good. Remember, in English it's good morning, buenos dias, good afternoon, buenas tardes, y good evening, buenas noches. Okay. The next one after night is noche, pero cuando decimos good night, eso es como hasta mañana, voy a dormir, like goodbye. Very good. Um, what else? What about the months? The months. The months of the year. 
What month is it now? Who can tell me the month? Who can tell me the month? What month is it? What month is it? Yeah, January is the first month, but it's not January now. What month is it? Que mes es ahorita? It's... Somebody? January, no, September. Yeah, September. What comes after September? September. What's after September? September. Yeah, in English it's September. What October? October. What's after October? February, March, April. Very good. Yeah. Let's do the last two months of the year. What comes after October? What's after October? November. Very good. November. And finally, what's after November? We have Lalo December. Very good. December. Good. Um, I think that's enough of that. I think lo que queremos hacer ahorita es. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, I think we'll have a review, a review of the present simple tense, a review of the present simple tense. So I think in the, in, in the first level we saw, in la primer nivel, vimos el presente simple, uh, tiempo, y en este curso, en los primeros clases, vimos un repaso de preguntas del presente simple. Vamos a seguir ahorita a ver el presente simple, un repaso rápido del presente simple. So first of all we have the affirmation, the statement, positive statement, for example, I usually work at home. This is a, un, uh, una affirmation in a presente simple, presente simple. So, let's put up there, present simple, present simple. I usually work at home. So, el presente simple es muy fácil, solo vamos a usar el sujeto más el verbo. I work at home. Y este aquí es un adverbio de frecuencia que son muy comunes en el presente simple. Pero cuando la persona es la tercera persona, el he, tenemos que hacer un cambio. ¿Quién me puede decir el cambio del verbo? Alguien. Let's put the next bit there. Works, very good, Flor Dulce, works, very good, yeah, porque cuando esa, cuando el sujeto es, cuando el sujeto es you, we, or they, solo tenemos que usar el verbo en su forma base, pero, Cuando el sujeto es un he, she, or it, que es la tercera persona singular, ya tenemos que agregar el S, el fin, aquí. Tenemos que agregar el S. Let's put that in red. So it's I work, he works, you work, she works, we work. It works. Es el único cambio que tienes que hacer en el presente simple. What about the negative? How do we form the negative? They don't work here. Cuando hacemos el negativo en el presente simple, tenemos que usar el auxiliar do más not. Do 
más not. Pero como siempre digo en inglés, hay muchas contracciones. I better move this because I, it's a bit under the video. It's better. Yeah. Don't. Don't. This es que como hablan los nativos. They don't work here. And what about when it's a he, a she, or an it? ¿Qué tenemos que usar aquí? Alguien me puede poner la respuesta. He, she, or it. He does not work here. Yeah. Does not work. Who said that? Um, Norma. Norma says he does, which is correct. Does not work here. But los nativos siempre van a hacer la contracción aquí y vamos a decir doesn't he doesn't so aquí fija que no no cambiamos aquí el verbo principal el verbo principal aquí es oh that's not a good color Let's change the color, something brighter, maybe this one. Uh, fija aquí que el verbo aquí no cambia, en el presente simple, porque el tercer persona, lo que cambiamos aquí es el verbo auxiliar, no en, el, en la afirmación cambiamos el verbo principal, es I work, but he works. Y en el negativo es I, you, we, they don't work o he, she, it doesn't work. Lo que tenemos que cambiar aquí es este. El verbo auxiliar, no el verbo principal. And what about the question? Who can give me an example of a question in the present Simple. Who can give me a question in the present simple? A question. A question in the present simple. Somebody? Alguien? Una pregunta en el presente simple? I learn English here. That's not a question. Do I learn English here? Esa es una pregunta. Say, do you work here, Alex? Yeah, but only Alex put, do you work here? Um, so, it's not a good idea to write like that. Do you work here? Very good, Alex. Do you work here? Do you work here? In that break, this is a pregunta, esta pregunta, la respuesta is sí o no. ¿Cuál es las dos, cuáles son las dos posibilidades que podemos tener a respuesta a este? The short answers. The short answers. Do you like bread? Yes, I like bread. Can you read my book? Very good. Pero eso no es en el presente simple. Yes, I do is one possible answer. Yes, I do. Or no. What's the other option? No, I don't. Who said that? Floor. Very good, Floor. No, I don't. So, recuerden que en inglés las respuestas cortos cuando tenemos así... Una pregunta en cual la respuesta es sí o no. Do you work here? La respuesta es yes, I do, or no, I don't. Generalmente no decimos yes or no. Well, let's do one more question. One more question with a question word. Just before we finish this. Um, oh, and I better explain too. Where's my question mark there? No. Uh, I better explain this. Voy a explicar este. Igualmente, en la pregunta, como vimos en la última clase, tienes que usar el verbo auxiliar. Do. Y si la pregunta es con la tercera persona, es does he work here? Does he work here? Um, do you want a cup of coffee? Do you want a cup of coffee, Jose? Yeah, very good. Ok, um, una pregunta más. Con, where does he work? 
Last question. Where does he work? So, otra vez vemos aquí que tenemos que usar el auxilio do en la pregunta más el verbo en su forma base. Cuando es la tercera persona usamos el does y otra vez el, for, la forma en el, la, el verbo en la forma base. Do you work? Does he work? Now, aquí en el primero, antes que seguimos, vimos um, aquí este usually, usually. Well, antes que hablo de eso, debería explicar los usos del presente simple. El presente simple se usa para datos, por, por ejemplo, water boils at 100 uh, I don't know where the degrees is on here, so I'll have to write it there. Degrees centigrade. Water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. Es, es, un, es un dato. Ese es un uso del presente simple. Otro uso del presente simple es cosas que ocurren uh, hábitos o rutinas. Hábitos o rutinas. I go to work every day. What's another use of the present simple? I think that's the main two uses of the present simple. Uh, so fre frecuentemente usamos el presente simple con esos adverbios de frecuencia. Um, adverbs of frequency. Let's put that there. Los adverbios de frecuencia son... Hay muchos, pero vamos a poner los más comunes. Always, que en español es siempre. Um, um, always, frequently, I'm looking for another one, actually. Usually, usually, yeah, I think that's better. Usually. Uh, usualmente. No voy a poner todos en español. Usually, sometimes, a veces, and maybe, uh, what else could we have? Um, uh, never. Hay otros, pero vamos a poner esos ahí. Esos se usan en el presente simple. Está muy común usar esos en el presente simple. Um, básicamente, tiene que y antes el verbo principal, si el, con la excepción cuando el verbo es el verbo be, generalmente, por ejemplo, I always watch YouTube. Uh, el adverbio de frecuencia viene antes el verbo principal, con la excepción cuando es el verbo be. I am sometimes late. A veces estoy tarde. Cuando es el verbo be, el adverbio viene después. Después. Okay. Um, let's move that up there. And let's move that up there. Oh, I can't move that up there. Let's move that down there. Move that up there. Now let's try some practice exercises in the present simple. Um, voy a poner aquí algunas palabras. Maria. Maria like music. No, let's change that. Let's put movies. Movies is películas. In English, Britannical, se llama, se llama films. Esta es una pregunta. ¿Quién puede formar la pregunta? It's a yes or no question. ¿Quién puede formar la pregunta aquí? ¿Alguien puede formar la pregunta? Aquí. Es una pregunta. Esos son como pistas. Falta palabras. Falta el verbo auxiliar para formar la pregunta. Does she like movies? Very good. Yeah. 
The correct answer is does she or does Maria like, who said that? Um, Yula, Yula. I hope I pronounced, the spell okay, pronounce it bien. Movies. Does Maria like movies? Good. Let's try another one then. Uh, this one is a negative. Um, a negative. Yeah. Mm, oh, I got the wrong one. Let's see a negative. Um, uh, no. Let's just try. Do the same one, I think. This time is not a question. Este vez no es una pregunta. Es un negativo. Formal negativo. Presente simple. Formal el negativo. How can we put it on here? El negativo. John don't like movies, Norma. Unfortunately, that's not correct. No, but Flor Dulce is correct. Remember, you have to use is to say persona. John doesn't like movies. Very good. Okay, uh, I think that's enough questions. Let's try something else. Um, Let's try something else. That was the one we did. Uh, let's add a page here. Um, lo que voy a hacer ahorita es voy a leer un texto de una persona. Y lo que quiero, sí, espero que tengan cuadernos para escribir o algo. Um, voy a leer un texto de una persona. A ver si ustedes pueden llenar este formato. Um, este es un ejercicio de uh, escuchando. Voy a leer un texto. Um, um, y llena esos datos. ¿Cuál es la nombre de la persona del texto que voy a leer? ¿Cuántos años tiene? En inglés es, what's his name? How old is he? What does he do? ¿A qué dedica? Appearance, como aparece, personality, como es su personalidad. Um, uh, does he smoke? Does he smoke? Does he smoke? What does he like? Que le gusta? And what doesn't he like? Let's put there, doesn't like. Okay. Voy a leer un texto y quiere que ustedes responden. Llenen los datos de la persona. Su nombre, su edad, su trabajo, cómo aparece, su personalidad, si fuma, si o no, qué le gusta y qué no le gusta. Let's read the text. Very simple text, muy corto. Voy a leerlo despacio. My friend's name is Mark. He is 48 years old. He is a doctor and he lives in London. He is 5 foot 11 inches tall and a little overweight. He is usually a very happy person. He doesn't smoke and he enjoys taking his dog for a walk. He doesn't like watching TV. He prefers reading. Okay, he's a doctor, his name's Mark. Good. Voy a leerlo de nuevo, para que puedan escuchar de nuevo. My friend's name is Mark. He is 48 years old. He is a doctor and he lives in London. He is 5 foot 11 tall, a little overweight. He is usually a very happy person. He doesn't smoke and he enjoys taking his dog for a walk. He doesn't like watching TV. 
he prefers reading. So, I think I should have, tal vez había puesto ahí también, falta uno aquí creo, um, place or lugar, donde vive, where does he live? So, first of all then, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? 51. Who's 51? No, nobody's 51. What's his name? His name is Mark. Somebody put Mark. Normally in English, Mark is spelled like that. M-A-R-K. -A -A Mark. Mark, yeah. Anna, R, Jose, Mark. Very good. What about his age? How old is he? How old is he? How old is he? Has anyone got his age? How old is he? When we say in English, let's put the questions up here too. So the first question is, what's his name? And the answer is Mark. The second question is, how old is he? Quantos años Jenny? Anna, ah, 48. Good. How old is he? 48. The next question is maybe, where does he live? Where does he live? Has anyone got the answer to that? His name is Mike, he's 48. He's a doctor. He lives in London. Julia, Christina. Very good. Yeah, London. Um... Jose, London, very good, Jose. Where does he live, London? What else? Um, appearance, how can we ask about someone's appearance? What does he look like? Este pregunta es como, la, como se aparece la persona. Su, uh, apare, como se aparece físicamente. What does he look like? What does he look like? Who can tell me what he looks like? Nobody. Let me read that bit again. How tall is he? That's another question that we could ask. How tall is he? Yeah, how tall is he? This is Altura. How tall is he? Let me read that a bit again. He's 5 foot 11 and a little overweight. He's five foot eleven and a little overweight. Who can answer that question? He's five foot eleven and a little overweight. So what does he look like? What does he look like? How tall is he? Maybe a lot of people don't understand. How tall is he? Anybody give me the answer? How tall is he? How tall is he? How tall is he? Can anybody answer that question? Nobody. The answer, the, what I said was, que dije es, he's 5'11". Oh, 5'11". So, estoy usando, es 5'11 in centimetros. Supongo, estamos hablando de 180 o algo así. Um... 180 centimetros. Now, ahorita en, en Estados Unidos usan todavía este tipo de medidas, igual usan gallons uh, y no litros, todo es en la sistema um, imperial. Y, pero en Inglaterra ahorita más común es usar el sistema métrico como ustedes, porque Inglaterra está ahorita, Reino Unido ahorita sigue en, el, en la comunidad europea. Pero es una cosa que ha cambiado, porque cuando yo estaba niño, igualmente en Inglaterra usábamos este sistema. Uh, y creo que para Arturas las personas van a seguir, bueno, las personas mayores probablemente van a seguir usando este sistema. Los jóvenes... Uh, probablemente usan más el, el sistema métrico. Pero uh, seguramente en, en Estados Unidos van a usar este. No te van a decir que son 180, van a usar uh, este sistema aquí. Ok, so how tall is he? He's 5 foot 11. 
What about his weight? What about his weight? What about his weight? Su peso. I said another word there. I said, he's a little overweight. Un poco sobre peso. Un poco sobre peso. Um, another way of saying that is to say, podemos decir, he's fat. Pero his fat is grosero. Entonces decimos, he's a, a little overweight. Very good. Vamos a ver, ¿qué más? ¿Qué más? Ah, next question. What's the next question? Um, we got his appearance, personality. Does he smoke? Does he smoke? Does he smoke? Does he smoke? Can anyone remember? Can anyone remember? He doesn't smoke. Very good. So the answer will be no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Good. And finally, what does he like? What does he like doing? What does he like doing? Anybody tell me the answer to that? What does he like doing? What does he like doing? Can anybody tell me what he likes doing? What does he like doing? What does he like doing? Read, yeah, he likes reading. I said two things actually, dos cosas. One was he likes, he likes taking his dog for a walk. Es que le gusta caminar con el perro. And I also said he likes reading. Well, what doesn't he like? A negative question. No pregunta negativa. What doesn't he like? What doesn't he like? What doesn't he like? He likes reading, yeah, okay. I said um, he doesn't like watching TV. He prefers reading. So he doesn't like watching TV. Very good, he doesn't like watching TV. Let's have a look. This was the uh, key. Debería tener, no, I don't have it. Ah, no, pensé que tuve aquí el texto. Ah, aquí está el texto. So this is what I read here. Let's, um, I don't know if we can move that. No, we can't move that to another page. Este es que leí, voy a leer de nuevo para que pueden escuchar y leer este vez. Um, creo que aquí hay un error, this debería decir he. So, my friend's name is Mark, and he's 48 years old. Fija aquí que estoy haciendo la contracción de este, porque es más natural para mí. My friend's name is Mark, and he's 48 years old. Aquí, recuerda, este aquí es para posesión. My friend's name is Mark. Es como se dice en español. El nombre de mi amigo es. My friend's name is Mark. Este vimos en el primer nivel. My friend's name is Mark and he's 48 years old. He is a doctor. Aquí también, naturalmente, voy a hacer la contracción ahí. He's a doctor and he lives in London. Let's make all these into contractions. He's 5 foot 11 tall. And a little overweight. He's usually a very happy person. He doesn't smoke and he enjoys taking his dog for a walk. He doesn't like watching TV. He prefers reading. One more time. My friend's name is Mark and he's 48 years old. He's a doctor and he lives in London. He's 5 foot 11 tall and a little overweight. He's usually a very happy person. He doesn't smoke and he enjoys taking his dog for a walk. 
he doesn't like watching TV, he prefers reading. And unfortunately, talking about dogs, you can probably hear a lot of dogs barking out there. Yeah, the dogs are barking. I better put that up there. The dogs are barking. Los perros están ladrando. Bark is ladra. And this is the present continuous tense. Okay, very good. Let's see how long. I think we've got time just for one more thing. So let's have a look. Um, some vocabulary. Some vocabulary. Um, what have I got here? No, I don't have this. Have I got a picture? Yeah, let's have a look at this here. Mm, can we move that? Yeah. So here we've got a picture of a face. A face. Sorry about the dogs. This is a face. Es una cara. Vamos a ver si podemos um, los nombres de las partes de la cara. Por ejemplo, esos dos aquí. ¿Cómo se llama esos? ¿Cómo se llama esos en inglés? What do you call them? That's a good question. What do you call them? What do you call them? Anybody the answer? Yeah, very good. We've got the answer there. I don't know what's happened to my text. Ah, there. Eyes. Eyes. Ojos. Oh, I wanted to see if we can put that there. Eyes. Very good. Eyes. What about, what's next? What about this thing here? This, what do we call that? What do we call that? Nose, very good, it's the nose, the nose, the nose, nose. Oh, it's a little bit complicated, just put that there. Um, what about, well, what about this here? What do we call that? Can anyone tell me what we call that? Lips, well, yeah, the, the lips on los labios. But what about this? The lips, I do the lips, let's do the lips here. Let's make it the lips. This is the lips. That's the lips. Put the lips there. And what about the mouth? Yeah, somebody got the mouth there. That's the mouth. The mouth. Good. What about, what else can we do? We got the lips, we got the mouth. What about this? This here, I don't have much. No tengo mucho yo, pero ahí tiene mucho. ¿Cómo se llama este? This is the, who can tell me the answer to this? This is the hair, very good, the hair. The hair. What about this here? What do we call this? More complicated. Uh, let's put it there. This bit's here, there, and there. What do we call them? Does anybody know? That's more difficult, most difficult. What do we call that? The cheeks, yeah, who said that? Very good, Armando. Cheeks. In Spanish, I think it's mejillas, no? I'm not sure. No estoy seguro. Let's put that there, cheeks. And I think we'll do one more. This bit here. What do we call that bit here? Let's move that up there for a minute. Uh, draw another line here. It's getting complicated now. What about that bit there? 
Can you still see that? What do we call that bit there? Anyone tell me what you call that? Yes, Mejias, good. What do we call that? Oh, I forgot the, the ears. Yeah, you can't see the ears. These are the ears. We can't see her ears. Um, what do we call this bit here? What do we call this bit? Anybody know? Nobody. That's called the chin. The chin. The chin. Yes. Put that down there. Can't move it for some reason. Chin. I think that's enough of the... I think we've got enough of that. Let's get rid of those. So these are, let's go through the vocabulary here. We've got the face, that's everything, la cara, the eyes, the nose, the hair, the cheeks, chin, mouth. Very good. Okay, let's carry on. Um, with some more vocabulary for parts of the body. Let's do, I think we'll have to add another page here. Another page and get another image here. We can, let's have a look at this. Mm, make that a bit bigger. So, what can we see here? First of all, what do we call, I don't know if I can draw a circle here somewhere. Mm, yeah, I don't know where a circle is. Maybe it's just that. No. Sorry, I've got a problem with this software for a minute. No, I can't do that. Let me, let me make another page because I've messed that one up a bit. Let's make another page. Let's start this one again. Oh, that box won't go away now. Well, let's not worry about it. Let's get no poquita esa caja ahí. Vamos a ver, primero, what do we call this bit here? The whole thing, this. What do we call that? What do we call that? Anyone tell me what we call this? Here. I was trying to draw a circle, but I can't find out how to draw a circle. Maybe this here. Ah, this here. What do we call this? Not a very nice, muy bueno, pero tiene la idea. What do we call this? Head. Very good. The head. That's the head. The head. It's a little bit tricky with this. Head. What about um, what about this here? This here. What about these two things here? Here and here. What do we call those? In Spanish, is hombros. Shoulders. Very good. They are the shoulders. Good. The shoulders. Hold on one sec. Shoulders, shoulders. Let's put uh, this sometimes. Shoulders. What about this here? What about this here? What about that? What do we call that? Arm, yeah, very good. The arm. What keeps doing that when I do that? Arm. Good. Move that out of the way. Let's close that down. Um, what about um, what about this here? What about this here? Who knows the name of that? Yeah, I missed that's not the hands. No, the hands is, this is the, oh, it keeps doing that. This is the hand. What about this? 
Anybody know? Elbow. Who said that? Elbow. Rosita. Very good. Sometimes it's difficult to. The elbow. Elbow. Good. What about this? I think we can do this bit here. This bit here. This is, what do we call this? What do we call this? The cinturon in Spanish. It's the waist. The waist. The waist. Good. The waist. And this bit here. Anybody tell me what that bit is? Legs, very good, the legs. Yeah, legs. Legs. Move that up a bit because it's legs. Oh, sorry. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, this program. The legs, and finally, I think the last one, we're gonna finish with this. What do we call those? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what we call those? Feet. Somebody said the feet. No, they're not the 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 singular. The singular is foot, but the this is un, un plural irregular. The, the plural is feet. So we say one foot or two feet. Okay, I lost the this one here. I can go. Okay, very good. I think uh, let's just repeat these words. We got the 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 head, the head, the shoulders, the arm, the hand, the elbow. Um, we've got the waist, the cinturon. We've got the legs, and we've got the feet. Okay, I think, how long is this class? Yeah, we're just coming up to an hour nearly that this class has been live, so I'm gonna finish now. I don't want the videos to go over an hour. So um, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next week in the next live class. Goodbye.